Hi everyone, this is Dkeys, bringing you my point of view on a bandit trio kill in which we use no environmental tools for the achievement. You can still use bombs for the launch pads, and overall this achievement is not very difficult, it's just a higher DPS and awareness check because you don't have those environmental tools to quickly take care of some of the bosses. At the start, we send two to three party mates, including the Mesmer up top, to deal with the adds on the bridges and the south platform, while the other seven clear out adds on the ground, and then LOS the north wall adds behind the dog cages. When not doing the achievement, we also position beehives near the east gate and oil kegs near the north gate in preparation for later bosses. I'm a dagger focus Ellie for this poll because I am responsible for seeing the bombardiers that set up cannons at 5 minutes 22 seconds and every minute thereafter either outside or on top of the fortress. The exercise to sustain from focus and the aftershock shout helps make this a very easy job and using either glyph of elementals or tornado as your elite makes soloing the wave of three cannoneers at 322 very easy. If not on cannons, I highly recommend either a Dagger Warhorn or a Staff Build, either for its superior DPS of Dagger Warhorn, or Staff so that you can aggro adds off the cage, or AoE adds that won't be pulled off the cage while dealing with some of the bosses that you can't really move without putting the cage in more danger. Instead of Aftershock, if doing a more DPS roll, I would recommend Glyph of Storms for the additional AoE damage, or for AoE blinds if cast in Earth Attunement. Berg spawns at 6.55 left on the timer. Berg has very knuckles-like mechanics and will pop up a break bar when he's about to do an AoE shockwave attack. For Berg, fight at the east gate and try to stand on the north or south side of him so that his shockwave doesn't head anywhere toward the cage. If using beehives, it's very, very easy to break his break bar and interrupt that shockwave but it's even easier and better DPS to just sidestep out of the attack and maintain your DPS rotation. When not using beehives, it's very hard to break that break bar, so just sidestep it. Make sure to position your AoEs so that you are cleaving adds in addition to the boss, and also Mesmer should be using focus pulls to pull in adds for melee cleave, and Necro should be using Epidemic and their other skills to help AoE cleave those adds and bounce those conditions back to the boss. When fighting adds between champions, fight near the cage since most of the adds will path there, but don't fight on top of the cage. Even the adds do significant damage to the cage, which if you lose the cage, you will fail the mission. When the first cannon alarm sounds at 5 minutes 22 seconds, use the south launch platform to jump out of the fortress. Position yourself near the launch pad and bomb box, and use a long range CC such as Gust when you see the bombardier has its break bar. Then quickly launch yourself back inside because unload hurts. If you can't position yourself well, use swirling winds just before you CC to minimize the damage you take. You'll also repeat this at 4.22 left on the timer. The raid should head to the south side of the fortress at about 5 minutes on the timer to prepare for Zane, since he will perform an unrelenting assault, followed by a very long range conal shot, it is important to keep him away from the cage, and even preferably facing away from the cage. Since we are not using wargs on him, defeating him will take a quite a bit longer than usual. While DPSing, sidestep or dodge his conal attacks, and try to walk out of the orange circular AoEs, which are blind fields. If you are a staff LE during this part, also keep an eye on the cage for adds and apply AoEs as necessary to pull adds south to you, or even blind them if they're being stubborn.
Assuming your raid doesn't need your assistance below, I will clear off the south bridge again after the 422 or 322 waves of bombardiers. Use Swirling Wince to cover your overload, then Earth Reflects to protect yourself while you finish off the last sniper up on that south bridge. Between Zane and Norella, your raid should clear out snipers on the south at the very least, and if possible a little bit on the north wall so that they are safe while DPSing Norella. For the 322 wave of bombardiers, use your elite and your weapon CCs to break all three break bars for the three bombardiers that spawn at the outer south launch pad. On dagger focus, Gust will take out a whole break bar in one action, while Comet won't quite do it in one action, so it's nice to apply a little bit of sauce CC there or use your elite on that guy. And then for the last Bombardier, use your soft CCs and get ready to put up reflects if needed and launch yourself back to the south bridge. If I didn't clear out the adds on the south bridge after the 422 wave, I will definitely do that after the 322 wave because those south bridge adds are really pesky while Norella is up. There really isn't a lot of time between when you're finished with the 322 adds and when the 222 adds spawn, so either stay up on the platform and heal, or make sure you use the north launch pad inside at the fortress very early, around 235 to 240 left on the timer, so that you can get to those bombardiers when they spawn. Two bombardiers spawn, but they are split, one on the south bridge and one on the deck on the west wall. After CCing, hop down in DPS Nerla. Norella has a lot of attacks like Sabatha, but doesn't have as controllable aggro mechanics. Identify who is targeted by the napalm and have them stay out of melee. Flame tornadoes also tend to chase people, and since they deal decent damage and trap you for several seconds, avoid them as much as you can. Norella doesn't really have a lot of HP, but failing the mechanics leads to a lot of wipes during this part. If your group is using oil kegs, also use your fire skills and feel the burn if using that utility to ignite the oil and deal additional damage to Norella. With a little planning and some situational awareness, this event is very easy and can be done very smoothly. Thanks for watching!